Benet took advantage of the absence of the homeowner and tied up the girl. Then, she forcefully pushed her onto the bed. The girl thought the nanny was playing a game with her, so she laughed and got up. But as soon as she stood up, the nanny pushed her down again. After a few repetitions, the girl became angry. The nanny was momentarily stunned and then untied the rope. Once the girl got up, she immediately slapped the nanny several times. But the harder the girl struck, the happier the nanny became. She firmly told the girl that whenever someone pushes her down, no matter how difficult it may be, she must stand up and strike back fiercely, just like she did now. That evening, the mother returned home and noticed the bruises on her daughter's body. She questioned the nanny about what happened, but before the nanny could respond, the girl told her mother that she got the bruises accidentally while swinging on a swing. The next day, when the nanny went to pick up the girl from school, she witnessed the girl being bullied by a boy. Hastily, she ran forward, but just as she reached the doorstep, she saw the girl already standing up and fiercely attacking the boy who had bullied her. Even when she was pushed down again, she bravely stood up and charged at the boy. The nanny smiled with relief as the girl finally showed a spirit of resistance. After this incident, the nanny Eva and the girl grew closer, but it aroused suspicion from the mother. Eva was overly concerned about the girl, even going so far as to buy a princess castle out of her own pocket as a Christmas gift. Seeing their similar curly hair and remembering the exchanges between Eva and her husband, the mother decided to secretly follow Eva. Unexpectedly, she discovered that Eva lived in a house right across from her own. They locked eyes through the window, and the mother knocked on Eva's door. However, as soon as she entered the house, she noticed the walls covered with paintings made by her daughter and the table adorned with her daughter's photographs. It instantly dawned on her that Eva was the girl's biological mother. She warned Eva that the adoption procedures were legally binding, and she was the girl's mother. She fired Eva from her nanny job and demanded that she stay away from her daughter. However, even as she left, the mother didn't realize that there was still a man hiding behind the living room wall. The next day, the mother's body was recovered by the police. Eva openly moved into her mother's house, finally able to live together with her daughter. She thought nobody knew her secret. However, the good times didn't last long as the police found Eva's high heels and residence permit inside the mother's car. Furthermore, the investigation revealed that the brakes and the engine had been tampered with. Faced with such strong evidence, Eva claimed innocence and narrated her tragic ordeal. As it turns out, 12 years ago, Eva was sold to an illegal organization and became their money-making tool. Many girls unexpectedly became pregnant, which the organization's leader saw as a business opportunity. Over the course of 12 years, Eva gave birth to nine children, becoming a numb breeding machine. At that time, a sunny-faced man entered her life, and they quickly fell in love. However, the bald leader of the organization discovered their relationship and, as a warning to Eva, ordered the killing of her boyfriend. When Eva found her boyfriend's body in the garbage dump, her world completely collapsed. But at that moment, she discovered she was pregnant with her boyfriend's child. However, as soon as the girl was born and she took a glimpse, the bald leader bought her once again. Eva was unwilling and started secretly inquiring about her daughter's whereabouts. After three years of relentless searching, a doctor finally revealed a name and an address. Taking advantage of a moment alone with the bald leader, Eva seized the opportunity to stab him to death and took all of his cash. Embarking on a journey to find her daughter, after enduring numerous hardships, she finally arrived by her daughter's side. Eva knew she couldn't provide a better life for her daughter and planned to quietly leave after some time. However, the bald leader reappeared. It turned out he had been saved back then. The bald leader threatened Eva, demanding that she return the money. But at that moment, the mother knocked on the door. From their conversation, the bald leader learned the truth. In order to avoid exposure and intimidate Eva, he planned the murder of the mother and warned Eva that her daughter would be next. He forced Eva to fetch the money, but during their dispute on the way, Eva accidentally pushed the bald leader down, and perhaps even the heavens couldn't bear it, as the bald leader happened to collide with a sharp stone. Eva led the police to excavate the bald leader's body and recounted her past in the criminal organization. However, to her surprise, the police questioned a doctor, who stated that the girl was not Eva's child at all, and the name and address were just a signature the bald leader saw on a piece of jewelry. The mother was the designer of the necklace, and she legally adopted the girl. Eva never expected to encounter such a calamity. Upon hearing this, Eva instantly collapsed to the ground. The police conducted a DNA test, which confirmed that the child was indeed not hers. Poor Eva once again fell victim to fate. Due to the unintentional killing of the bald leader, Eva was sentenced to 10 years. Before entering prison, the police arranged for her to meet the girl one last time. Eva approached the girl's bedside and lied to her, saying that she was going abroad for work. She once again urged the girl to bravely fight back if anyone dared to bully her. 
After finishing their meeting, the girl finally fell into a deep sleep, comforted by Eva's words. Ten years passed in the blink of an eye, and Eva was released from prison, unsure of where to go or what to do. She saw a familiar figure approaching her. It was the girl from years ago.